hello and welcome to today's video this is essentially my version of the type of video where it's like if you like this thing then you might like this thing um i've seen these done before for books i've seen them done before for movies tv shows loads of other things what i'm doing today is basically like if you've enjoyed this tv show all of which are currently on netflix at least in the uk they are so yeah if you've enjoyed this tv show then i think you might also like this book and that's basically the gist of it i'm just combining the things together and in total today i have seven tv shows that i'm going to talk about and seven books that i'm going to recommend alongside them so i have watched at least some of all seven tv shows some of them i've binged everything some of them i've watched a season some of them i've watched a few episodes and just got a general gist for um and like i'm planning on continuing watching at some point like none of these tv shows are shows that i'm like don't enjoy basically um they're all ones that i do think are good and therefore if i thought this was good and this was good it should were and then in terms of the books i've read six of the seven books like completely there is one book that i haven't read but i just think because of the book and the type of people that i follow and listen to i mean i i would think i'll read it this year so when i do read it i'll like you know I'll, I'll comment down below or something but like i'll talk about it more when we get to that book but yeah there is one book that i haven't read but i feel confident in my reasoning to still recommend it and if anything changes i will like disclaimer it when i've actually read it so yeah so let's just get into it and start with the first tv show two book recommendation which is also the one that like built this idea from basically so the first tv show that i'm going to be talking about is raising dion raising dion there are two seasons currently out and available on netflix it follows dion's single mom nicole and dion who it turns out very quickly we find out has superpowers and needs to learn like how to control them how to hide them and who to trust with like the knowledge of them and to be honest i just found it like a really fun and really interesting take on like superpowers in general because it's like this kid's just got superpowers ah let's figure this out so whilst watching this tv show i was watching it with my boyfriend and we were talking about it and like what we we're thinking about it what we we're enjoying and the idea was born when i listened to what he was enjoying and was like you know you might also enjoy reading amari and the night brothers i yeah raising dion amari and the night brothers that's the first thing and to be honest i really think that they are such a similar vibe just done differently in Amari and the Night Brothers, we have Amari as our main character. Her brother, Quinton, has gone missing and she's the only one that doesn't really believe that it's like normal. And very early on, she learns magic is real. There's this whole entire like magical world and ends up going to a magical summer school. And the magical summer school is like the main setting throughout the book. So how are these two like kind of like related to each other? How am I connecting them? Our main characters, Dion and Amari, are both quite young. Dion, in between like seasons one and two, is between like eight and ten years old, and Amari in the book is twelve years old. And both of their best friends are very much giving me the same vibe. They're both kind of outcast, not the most popular, but will always look out for our main character. They're both very willing to like keep the main character secret without really much question and also are both like very very lovable in their own right and obviously Amari and Dion are also both involved in a magical world and they're both kind of like the good ones you know um and they want to fight against evil and fight for what they love so yeah for those reasons but also mainly like just vibes and if you have like watched and read both of these please tell me if you agree um because yeah just vibes so yeah those reasons plus the vibes is why i'm connecting these two and saying if you liked raising dion then i think you'd also like amari and the night brothers and obviously this works the other way around as well if you've already read amari and the night brothers you might like raising dion for the rest of this video i'm just going to say it one way around but it is 
completely changeable. If you've watched one, if you've read one, give the other one a go. So, the next TV show that I'm going to be talking about is The Order. Um, honestly, this is just a very cheesy, witchy TV show. Or at least that's how it seemed to me. So I can remember binging all of season one within a couple of days when I was ill. Um, so my memory's a little bit hazy of it, but I can definitely remember like, you know, like a main character, like the main vibe coming from it. And also like the witchy aspects of it. And obviously I enjoyed it. Like, is it a show I'm gonna go back and rewatch? Not ill? Maybe. But is it a show that I thoroughly enjoyed for what it was and like the full cheesiness and enjoying it? Yeah. And if another season comes out, I'd probably watch a wrap up of season one and then like continue watching because I do remember really enjoying it. So that's kind of like the vibe we're going with here. I don't remember the best about this show, but the general vibes and hope made me feel in the enjoyment are there. And during the show, we mainly follow Jack, who is new to the group. He is new to like this magical world and he needs to learn about the group. He needs to learn about magic. And it's just basically a good time of plotting like within the group, outside of the group, monsters, and like just general group dynamics. It's a good time. I had a good time of it. So what book does this remind me of you ask? The Secret Circle. These are the exact same vibe. Like they've, they've been done differently, but these are the exact same vibe. In the TV show, our characters are older. They are, I believe it's like college, university um, sort of ages. Uh, whereas in the book, they are like high school ages. Honestly, I do think the book would have been better if they were aged up because some of it is, you know, a little childish. But as long as you go into the books expecting it to be a lot more YA, I still think you can thoroughly enjoy it. So in the books, we meet Cassie, our main character, who is new to town, new to the school, very quickly learns about magic and that she's a witch and is inducted into this coven and is now part of the group and they all live on the same road and go to the same school. So just that alone you can see the general very basic synopsis of these things are so similar. They have the same like basic plot and give the exact same feel. I will say the further on you go into both like watching the TV show and like further on into the book series, they do like stray away from that general basic bit but you know the first handful of episodes of the TV show and the first book very much same and then they expand on it so also if you're enjoying one and the other you're also going to eventually get like very different stories branching off to do these different things. And yeah for that reason I just think they match. No. The third TV show that I want to talk about is Good Girls and this TV show was amazing. Um, it's absolute bullshit that it got cancelled to be quite honest and I'm still quite salty about the fact that it did get cancelled but it's been a while so <laughs> yeah. But don't worry even though it got cancelled there are still four seasons of it currently out on Netflix and they're great. So in Good Girls there are three mums and the three mums are in like different situations in terms of like their lives and like what they're doing and like who they have in their lives but the thing they all have in common except for like the fact they are like friends is they all need money they've all at some point got into situations where they need money and in season one episode one they end up robbing a store and in the process of robbing this store they get mixed up in quite a lot of like more dangerous things including becoming involved in a gang um yeah and the tv show itself is just kind of like funny it's intense and they just keep getting themselves into these type of situations and it causes them to do more dangerous things and more dangerous things and more illegal things and more illegal things and it's just great it's just great like obviously i don't want to say too much because i don't want to give anything away because if you haven't watched it you should watch it um but yeah i honestly just love this show and i'm still kind of keeping my fingers crossed that like a different tv company will pick it up for more seasons because i loved it and then the book i want to link to this tv show is actually the book that i haven't read yet but i am confident enough in this to still give this recommendation so i've read the synopsis of the book 
I've heard a lot of people talk about it, both like from reviews and also in like monthly wrap ups and stuff and like vlogs. A lot of people talk about this book. And due to all these things, I'm very confident it's going to be the same vibe. So the book I'm recommending to go along with Good Girls is Finley Donovan is killing it. I can't wait to read this book. I just want to put that out there. I just haven't got round to it yet. But oh my god, I think that these are going to match so well. And I'm also really hoping like that I'm writing this because Good Girls got cancelled. I need something else to take that spot. And I really do think that this is going to be such a good match. So the synopsis of the book says, Finley Donovan is killing it, except she's really not. A stressed out single mom of two and struggling novelist, Finley's life is chaos. The new book she promised her literary agent isn't written. Her ex-husband fired the nanny without telling her. And this morning she had to send her four-year-old to school with hair duct taped to her head after an incident with scissors. When Finley is overheard discussing the plot of her new suspense novel with her agent over lunch, she's mistaken for a contract killer and inadvertently accepts an offer to dispose of a problem husband in order to make ends meet. She soon discovers that crime in real life is a lot more difficult than its fictional counterpart and she becomes tangled in a real life murder investigation. And I just truly feel like this is going to be the exact same vibe. Like this show and this book, same vibe. And yeah, I'm hoping I can stand by this. I will definitely, once I've read it, which will, fingers crossed, be within the year, um, I'll pin a comment down below and let you know if I was right, if this does hit that same spot. But yeah, those are the TV show and book that I'm recommending to pair together. Then we have RuPaul's Drag Race. So, this is a very loved and well-known show. It is hosted by RuPaul and it hosts a bunch of contestants who compete against each other to become the best drag queen. I think that's the easiest way to explain it if you haven't for some reason heard of it. If you haven't, like, go give it a watch. But yeah, no. I'm nowhere near cool with this show. Uh, there are so many seasons across so many things. There's like UK, all stars, celebrities, and like so, so, so many more. Like if you search RuPaul Drag Race, you'll just see like on Google an entire thing of like different variations of it. So I'm nowhere near cool. But I have watched a couple of seasons of it and they were just so fun. They were so much fun and they really just made me want to learn more about drag and more about the drag world. So like just with that in mind I already have a book that I just, these aren't the same, like it's not the same thing but I think they give you that same feeling after watching the show of like oh my gosh like I want to know more about this, I want more, like I want to learn more and know more and understand this better. So yeah that's kind of why i'm recommending them together so the book i'm recommending is very different to the show but it does delve into that like drag world aspect within it and the book is the black flamingo uh, like this book so good i loved this book it was so amazing and i will say the my one recommendation here is if you are going to read this book i would 100 percent recommend listening to the audiobook the entire book is told in verse um and maybe your head can just like do that and it would sound great but my head can't do that so the audiobook for this book was so amazing like it really made the book but i would also say have it physically as well or like as an ebook but throughout the pages of the book in fact i'm going to grab it so throughout the pages of the book okay so on some of them it's set out like this like text messages on some of them on some of them it's like a page taken from another book and it's in there and there's others where it's just set up so interestingly that's the best way i can think of it and there's others where there's like illustrations to go along with it and yeah so i would definitely say that having both the audiobook and like a version of the book that you can like visually see the pages really just heighten the experience to like have them both so, what is The Black Flamingo about? It is about a boy, Michael, coming to terms with his identity. He is a mixed race gay teen and we cover quite a large span of life and there's a lot for him to like find out about himself and accept himself like within these identities that he carries. And a little bit into the book we go to university with Michael and 
um, there at university he finds drag and truly learns to accept himself for how unique he is and like just show himself to the world. It was amazing and so lovely following like Michael's story and it really did just give you all the feels so yeah 100% recommend. Then moving on we have Vampire Diaries as our next TV show. I'm sure most people have seen this or at least caught like the odd episode of the odd season of it so I won't go too much into detail here but we have three main characters Elena, Stefan, Damon and we have Elena's two best friends Caroline and Bonnie and then we also have like a whole host of other characters and other people who are important at various points throughout the entire eight seasons of the show. We have a lot of mythical creatures that are explored throughout the show such as like vampires, werewolves, doppelgangers and they're like the three main ones we explore but there are others as well and it spans quite a large amount of time we kind of cover like high school and the end of high school, college and then also post college and I know I haven't gone into much detail about what the show is but I really am just assuming that most people have like a basic understanding of what the show is even if they haven't seen it. No, the book I'm going to recommend to like pair with the Vampire Diaries is the Morganville Vampire series but because it's one book for the show, specifically book one of the series is called Glass Houses so I guess for that purpose I'm recommending Glass Houses but like the entire series, like the entire thing. Now in Glass Houses we really only get like an introduction into this world we follow Claire who has just started university in Morganville and after being like run out of her like dorm room basically uh, is moving into a house with Eve, Michael and Shane and she soon discovers vampires are real and they run the town and the story just keeps expanding from there like so much more so many other things so many like things to follow and see but yeah. So the most obvious reason why I'm linking these is obviously like the vampire aspect. <laughs> Vampires are a major part of the storyline in both books. And then the other reason I'm really linking them is like the friendship groups and like the vibe from the friendship groups in both Vampire Diaries the TV show and also in Morganville Vampires the book series. Like those groups just have very similar feelings for me. Everyone in the group kind of has like their own role and their own thing to do when various problems arise and yeah when things happen they just give the same vibe with how things are dealt with within like a friendship group. They have to figure it out together. Everyone's important. Everyone's got a role to play. Let's get this done. And honestly the More Than a Vampire book series is just one of my favourites. It really does give that same vibe of like the angsty teen TV show drama that we used to get like 10 plus years ago that I still live for honestly. And I started the book series around that same time and I'm, I'm still reading them like they're great um, and I just pick up the books every so often for a comfort read and it does give you that exact same vibe as like the TV shows used to like 10 plus years ago when like they were like just everywhere. Then we have Teen Wolf. So I've only watched like the first few seasons of this. I think there ended up being like a lot more seasons that I didn't watch but like the main characters were different. Um, so I've only watched like the first one with like the main characters being like Scott and Styles. But yeah when I was watching it we had werewolves as our main creatures and we also had like the odd other like magical creature coming in now and then. We follow Scott and Styles as they go searching through the woods for a dead body and during this Scott gets bitten by something we don't know what Scott gets bitten and by the next full moon we figure out exactly what that bite meant. Overall we have like a wolf pack but then we also have like a group of friends that know about the secret being held. A large proportion of them are in high school and if we take that very simple synopsis I've just given you for the TV show it could also be the very same simple synopsis I could give you for the book Shiver. Um, so yeah, um, Shiver is a book in a free book series, it is book one, and the, the Shiver book, book one, is really just a starting point to introducing everything going on. And in terms of these, like already I've given you a basic synopsis and like same, uh, but they both have high school characters, 
They both mainly focus on werewolves. They both have a big group of friends. They both have romance. And they both have the past come into play a very big part. And honestly, they both just give the exact same vibe. And they're just so similar. I do truly feel like if you like the one, you'll like the other. Okay, then last but not least, we have the TV show Lost in Space. Now, this is one that I've only recently discovered. As of now, I've only watched the first half of season one. So I do just want to preface it with that because for all I know, the TV show could end up going off on like a completely different tangent to what I'm currently watching. But yeah, as of what I've watched, that's how I'm doing it. In the TV show, we mainly follow a group of people who are in space. And as the title may suggest in the TV show, they are actually lost in space but then at some point they encounter like a robot slash alien life form that looks a lot like a robot and they have to work together to try and survive basically they need to kind of like decide together what should they do should they be looking for help should they be helping themselves should they be trying to discover more about where they're lost or should they just be trying to survive where they are no the book i'm gonna link to this is very different but it is set in space and I'd say that for me the like visual element that both the TV show and the book give are what mainly links them together. So the book is called All Systems Red and it is book one in the Murderbot Diaries. So it is very different. We're following a group of people who are purposely exploring a planet and when they do this they have to loan out from the company a security android which is essentially an ai robot if you really really want to simplify it and whilst they explore this planet the security robot has to keep them safe and even just the first book alone like these are short novellas but even just from the first book we explore so much more than that but that is like the basic synopsis of it now, i think the main reason these are linking so easily is definitely the space element there are new planets different planets and they're trying to explore them and then also I'd say uh, Alien from like the TV show and Murderbot from the books really have like a very similar vibe for me at least like visually um, how Murderbot is described and how they are shown on the front cover and then how uh, Alien is seen in the TV show they just look very visually similar for me and although I need to get further into the TV show and I also really need to get further into the books so there's no six out. Um, I think for me at least you know season one book one I think these work really well and if you like one you're gonna like the other. So those are all seven if you liked this TV show you might like this book or vice versa recommendations. I really do hope that you enjoyed this and I hope that you managed to get some sort of recommendation from it. If you have any other recommendations for either like TV shows mentioned or other TV shows that you think like relate to books really well then please do let me know in the comments down below. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please do give it a like if you liked it and to stick around for more videos click the subscribe button down below. I do try my very best to upload videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday so hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye!